Welcome back to another sketch tutorial. In this episode, we're going to look at creating a more complex component, which uses some of the elements we've created so far and builds this sign up form. And then also how we can use the power of our system that we set up to just make small little changes that can have a big impact on the, the whole design. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start by bringing in a container. So let's bring in a medium radius container. Doesn't really matter where we put it, I'm just going to shove it in here for now. Uh, that kind of size will do. I'm going to give it a white background or a light base color. Uh, let's give the outline, let's go dark and the light version. And that's quite nice for now. Uh, the shadow's fine. Okay, let's start with that. I'm going to drop in a piece of text on top of that. Let's go high emphasis. Let's go heading three. I'm just going to call this sign up. I'm going to try and keep the padding consistent here. So let's try and make that 32. And I'm actually going to go ahead and drag this. Uh, let's make these a group and now I've done that I can use the resizing options so I'm going to pin it to the top the left and the right but make sure that its height remains constant so if I drag this around a bit it resizes with it nicely okay and beneath that I'm going to drop uh, one of these text fields in fact because we've got them right here I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. So there we go. Let's get some nice eight pixel grid consistent padding. I'm gonna go with 24. And again, I'm gonna make this so it's in line, 32 padding around each side. And I'm just gonna pin it to the top left and right and give it that fixed height again. And I'm gonna call this one, let's call this field name. We've got a placeholder piece of text here, so I'm just going to give this a placeholder of e.g. Elon Musk. Okay, now I'm just going to drag and duplicate this. Let's go with email next. E.g. Elon at Tesla.com. And because I've just duplicated it, We've still kept our resizing settings here, so that's nice. And let's do one more. Let's just say password. And I'm just going to drop the placeholder for password. And to do that, I'm just going to basically select the text we have in here. And I'm just going to go space. And visually, that is empty. So and now I want a button. And because we've got the buttons right here, I'm going to go ahead and select it from here. But which one do we want? Do we want fixed or do we want auto layout? Now, I am going to go with a fixed width button because I would like to maintain the 32 padding on the sides, even if this was resized. So let's drop that in. 24 is fine. And I'm going to bring up the container. So we've got 20, uh, sorry, 32 again on the outside. So now if we just have a look at all those edges, we've got 32 everywhere. That's nice, nice consistent padding. And if we resize, we can see, oh, it's not quite what we want. We saw the, saw the button peel away from the edge there. So that's more than 32 now. And that's because I didn't set our resizing settings. So I'm gonna to go to right bottom this time, because this is at the bottom of the form and left, and then give it a fixed height. So now that would stick to the bottom if I resized. And similarly, it would stick to the sides if I resized the width. So this is cool. This is looking nice already. Um, I'm actually going to also add in a little bit of text underneath. So let's go with, I'm going to insert a new bit of text. Um, let's bring in dark, let's call this medium emphasis regular left. I'm going to say something along the lines of already got an account 
And then I'm going to give a little login link there as well. So let's actually go with go with low emphasis for that one. Don't want it to distract from the form too much. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just going to copy this, just move it next to it. And I'm going to change the text style to primary as that's kind of our hyperlink color as well. Regular and left. Now let's give this sign in here. Okay. And I'm going to also group these together. So I'm just going to give that group and make sure again it's 32 from the edges. Give us the auto layout settings we like. Okay, nice. Now that's sticking nicely. Okay, there's a little problem in there. So, okay. So I'm also just going to pin these to the side there as well. So now that's working nicely. Okay, so we have our form. Now I'm going to create a symbol from this. And let's call this forms slash sign up. That makes sense there. So now we've got our symbol. And you can see if I just select the symbol here, we've got access to our override as well. And you can see some of these are not in the right order. So I'm going to go ahead and just tidy that up a little bit. You can see here, you can see this group is at the top. So let's move that just above the container, then the button, and then let's flip the order of these fields and now these should be in the, in the right order if we just flip back to to the components page we can now see that our overrides are in order of top to bottom which is a little bit easier to to find what we want to edit if we do want to override things and another thing i'd like to change if you notice if i wanted to change the text here this gap happens to this sign in here link stays in the same place relative to the left side uh, and I'd quite like it to sort of tuck up next to the the gray text depending on whatever value that is so let's go ahead and do that so okay we're in a group already I'm gonna go to layout horizontal and left to right and just need to make sure these don't have a fixed width so let's just take away the fixed width make sure the alignment is auto width and that should be good to go let's give it a go so if i say lorem ipsum there we go and it maintains whatever gap we have between the two so for example if i had put a 20 gap it would maintain this 20 gap so that's pretty nice uh, i'm just going to go ahead and undo that okay cool let's give the button a better label than that let's just say create account that makes more sense okay nice another change I'd just like to make if we look at the form here for example and I say okay now I'm looking at it I'd actually quite like maybe on this instance of the the form maybe a, a slightly larger title so I go here and I go all right we're on heading three right now how about we upgrade this to heading one and I go left and then it comes in, but it doesn't push everything else down. So now we have some pretty tight spacing between our top field here and the title, which is not really ideal. And we can get around this by just applying auto layout to the form itself. So I'm going to give this a vertical top bottom auto layout. And if I just head back to the components page, and let's do the same thing we just saw. So I'm going to swap this out for high emphasis heading one left. And automatically, our form has resized and ensured we have the same spacing that we defined originally between our title and our first form field here, which is really nice. It keeps things nice and scalable. We don't have to keep going back and making amends here if we only want that change to happen in, in one symbol or one instance of that symbol in particular. Now I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. But really what I want to show with this symbol here is the power you now have once you've set up all of these symbols, which are based on your layer styles and everything you've set up in your core styles. 
And I just want to show how small changes to your core styles uh, can cascade down uh, throughout your designs and throughout your app without much effort at all on your part. I know previously, before I was very disciplined in doing this, I could spend hours even going through and changing one color in a hundred different places throughout a design because I didn't have my, my color variables and my layer styles set up correctly. So you'd have to go through and find them all. But by using this cascading structure, it really does just save you a lot of time and give you a lot of power to make changes throughout your whole designs. So let's have a little look at that in action. So let's have a little look at some examples of cascading styles in action. So let's go to our core styles and let's edit our primary color variable. So I'm just going to edit this to, let's just go with a, a blue like this and update. So straight away, because we've used our color variable in all of our primary layer styles, all the colors are updated and we've used our color variable in our, in our borders. So they're updated as well. Our containers are using our primary color, so that's great. Uh, our primary font was using our primary color variable, so they're all updated as well. Let's head over to components and see our, our primary buttons already updated, the primary highlight on our form field, and our primary button and our link here are updated. So just that one small change and the feel of our, our design has, has changed drastically already. Uh, let's look at a couple other examples. So, for example, here I'm using a medium radius and a small radius. So medium radius for the container and small radius for both the form field and the button here. Now let's say, oh no, let's increase these. So click through to our symbols page on our small radius. I'm just going to make sure I've got all of these selected. Uh, let's boost this to say 16 and let's make our medium 24 and let's head back let's have a look at this in action and already we've got a much sort of bubblier a more playful feel to our design which is seen throughout all of our components and let's look at another change with our fonts and to change our fonts as we, we've seen in the, in the font video we can just select all of the headings like this if we just want to change the headings Let's head over to our textile. I'm going to go with this one here. So it's a more of a serif style font, which is a very different feel. Make sure to click update and that will be updated. And let's change our normal font styles to Visual Pro. And again, update those. So now let's have a look at our components and straight away, all these changes have taken effect so we can see again it's a bit more of a playful style on the font and the serif up there as well so it's really given us a much different look and feel just those three changes okay four if you count the two fonts um, have changed the style of our entire design system and if you think about trying to do that on each individual instance say you say you didn't have textile setup throughout your design and you were implementing text individually you'd have to go through change sign up here change the text here change the text here i mean even within this one form that would give you probably 10 more changes to make and let's imagine you've got hundreds of these forms throughout your app that's going to take you a long time but we've just done that in less than a minute Thanks for watching this tutorial. Next time we're going to look at using libraries and how we can maintain a central design system in one file and use it in other files. And this allows us to maintain smaller file sizes, which prevents Sketch from running super slow, which I'm sure many of you have experienced if you if you have, especially if you have a bunch of images in a file. But also it allows us to maintain our, our cascading styles. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a, a web app and a mobile app for your product, you could actually base those on the same base library, but then still use custom components in each of those files as you needed for those particular devices. So we're going to see how we do that next time. 
So see you then.